In today's video, we are flying to Switzerland to go skiing in the Swiss Alps. One big favor before we dive in is to give this video a like and subscribe if you like content like this. We hopped on a short flight from SFO to LAX to fly Delta One to Paris. The Delta One flight was about 10 hours. We booked economy class flights and applied a global upgrade certificate from having Delta Diamond status. Luckily, the upgrade cleared. For dinner service, I ordered the salmon ahead of time and it was perfectly cooked. The seat is a lie flat and I got plenty of rest. After we landed at CDG, we hopped on a short Air France flight to Zurich where we spent the night at an airport hotel. After 21 hours of travel, we finally made it to our final destination of the night, which is Zurich. And then tomorrow morning, Seb says he's going to wake up at 6 a.m. Actually, no, he said he's going to catch the 6 a.m. train to Andermatt, and I would love to see that. Have you seen my Notion doc? It's on, <laughs> it's on the Notion doc. It can be on the Notion doc. It can be scheduled all you want, but I would love to see him on that 6 a.m. train. My prediction is that we're going to end up on probably the 8 or 9 a.m. train. You seem to have not checked my <laughs> document that I sent you with a lot of key information. <laughs> Well, anyways, I'll let future Mandy let you know which train we end up taking. Tomorrow. Good morning. We are headed out to start the trek to Andermatt. We're going to hop on a train that's downstairs. And we were supposed to catch, what was that sub? The 6 a.m. train. And it's currently now 7 something. Cool. So I won that bet. Andermatt is about two hours away from Zurich by train. Switzerland's train system is one of the most efficient and beautiful in the world. We took the train from Zurich to Goschenen and then hopped on the local train to Andermatt. We were in a rush and booked first class tickets, but accidentally ended up sitting in second class seats because we didn't realize that the first class cabin was towards the end of the train as opposed to the front. Eventually, we did shift up to the right seats after the conductor notified us. If I were to do it again, I would just get the regular tickets since the seats are already spacious and comfy and the scenic views are amazing regardless of where you're sitting. On the local train to Andermatt, I could see where Disney got the inspiration for the ride Matterhorn, going through the wooden tunnels, seeing the waterfalls, and the stunning mountain views. Welcome to the small hotel where the production staff of James Bond Goldfinger stayed. So apparently Sean Connery stayed here, when they were filming in Andermatt. So the hotel itself is not in the movie, but the staff and team stayed here. It was about $300 per night, and we were not aware of the history of the hotel before booking. It was one of the very few hotels that were available for a last minute when we decided to come here. One of the benefits is, even though this is like a typical European-sized hotel, there is room to actually open your luggage. Pretty bare bones. It is newly renovated, so there was a bit of a paint smell, which was okay, not that great. So we opened a window just to air everything out. Very cozy hotel, 23 rooms and breakfast is included. So very simple breakfast spread, fruits, vegetables, meat, cheese, and coffee. We are number 26. He said there's only 23 rooms. Uh, maybe they don't start at one. Yeah, maybe they don't start at one. Yeah, not much else to say. Let's go explore the rest of the Andermatt and stay tuned for the five-star hotel. Around the village, you can find a bunch of rental shops. Sebastian did decide to rent skis this time around just because we heard that you can demo skis here and it's a shorter trip. So about only three days of skiing, not really worth lugging it around internationally. The rental itself came out to be 102 US dollars for the skis and the poles. He did end up bringing his own shoes. I would say that's a relatively good price point just because in the US, ski rentals for one day can be about $100 for only one, and it's three days here for about $100. We're staying in the Andermatt area this time, and it is on Epic Pass. So if you have Epic Pass, just go to the main ticket office, show them the pass, and let them know how many days you'll be skiing, and they'll give you one of the mountain passes and it's a five dollar deposit and once you bring the card back they'll refund the five dollars we're here around mid-march and for the next few days it's surprisingly warm it's pretty comfortable outside with just a down jacket and thin layers definitely colder in this echo it's so warm that on the sidewalks, there's not any snow, so no need to bring out the ski boots.
Seb, you looked a little wrecked. What happened? My foot is hurting a little. I think either it's like weirdly inflamed or something or just like fat. Don't know what's going on, but yeah. Otherwise, good. It's tired. To be fair, it's not really cold here. Like I can go outside without gloves and a parka, which means it's relatively warm. And then if you look down on the hill, it's not really snow covered. Half of it's melted. So there's that. Warmer weather means your foot is probably going to be more swollen versus super cold climate. Uh, I think I had my boot the same settings and stuff as the Seco, but then it's hurting. Like it feels too tight. So I probably need to just loosen it up a little bit. Uh, and also it's kind of slushy weather. Like there's a lot of running water. Yeah, this is a spa vacation for Mandy, especially for the hotel where you to stay at tomorrow and maybe Seb will check out a Dunner Mountain. We'll see. For lunch, we had reservations at the Japanese restaurant at Gut, the Michelin starred restaurant by De Chetti. It's no secret that food in Switzerland is expensive. To get there, you do need a lift ticket to ride the Gut Express up the mountain. We ordered the bento box lunch set, which was 150 francs per person. It included an assortment of sushi, miso codfish, beef, and miso soup. Unless you are really craving Japanese food, this would be a skip for me. If you've been to Japan or you live in a city that has high quality sushi, I think you'd be very disappointed in the meal, especially given the steep prices. We were so underwhelmed by the meal that we canceled our reservation at the sister two Michelin star restaurant located inside the Chetty. If you want to splurge on a Michelin star meal, I recommend going next door to Gutch, which we'll cover later in the video. Welcome to the Chetty and Andermatt. But first, take a look at the amazing Swiss Alps. I think something is on fire back there, so let's step back inside. So we switched it up a little bit and actually booked a stay through Virtuoso, which is a luxury travel agent because you can't book the Chetty on any point system. It's in its own luxury hotel category and hotel group. This is one of the nicest hotels in Andermatt and possibly in Switzerland. One of the benefits of booking through Virtuoso is that you do get a complimentary champagne spread. So nice bottle of champagne here. Um, I'm guessing the small bottles, 20 francs, and the big bottle can go up to 220 francs. So I'm guessing 20 to $50. We'll put the correct price on screen. And we have some chocolate covered strawberries. It's one of the finest champagne houses in the world, over 200 years old. And I will put some more information on screen. And of course, Switzerland is famous for chocolate. So we have some Swiss chocolate here. One of the unique benefits of the property is that all of the beverages that are non-alcoholic are complimentary. So have little bottles of water. Sebastian already started on a Coke Zero. Also have some juices. Ooh, what's this? Regular soda. I'm guessing, yeah, I think this is pressed apple juice, some type of soda pop, kombucha. We will probably clarify with the front desk, but I, I don't believe kombucha should be alcoholic. Matcha drink, orange juice, and tonic water. And everything else is alcohol. So yeah, they refill the mini bar once per day. There's an espresso machine here, and these are the pods. There's a nice tea selection as well. We also have fisherman's spread. My dad loves these, but I don't believe these are complimentary. So leaving them here. So Fisherman's Friend, if you're unaware, is kind of like a soothing throat lounge. Um, so it's supposed to make it like nice and minty, especially with like the cold and dry weather. Lozenge. Yeah, lozenge. Lozenge. That's, I don't know, he eats it like candy. <laughs> so by the bed, there are anti-aging face masks and a cream for your eyes and lips. Oh, the bed is really nice and plushy. This is a real fireplace, so there is a switch to turn on, and we'll do that in a minute. Yes, the TV does turn. Did you know you're supposed to measure a TV diagonal, Seb, and not by width? <laughs> Moving along here, step inside the bathroom. So we have a nice large tub here, and instead of a candle, they have kind of like essential oil um, diffuser. I think that's the correct term for it. Yeah, essential oil diffuser. The bath amenities are from Aqua di Parma and some more amenities here. Oh, so there's a laundry basket. I think it's only in the super high-end hotels where there's a laundry basket because the only other time we've seen one is at the Rosewood and also Park Hyatt. Huge shower, so waterfall is all the way up there. <laughs> I can't even touch it if I try jumping. For some reason, I expected this to be a bidet, but it's not, it's a normal toilet. And for some reason, a pretty large table in the washroom and a phone. Over here is the closet. So this is a cute little tote bag that you can use on property. 
However, if you do decide to take it with you, they will charge you 35 francs. No, this is just like a, a felt bag. Yeah, this isn't like wool or anything. It's like felt and fake leather, platter. Up here are super plushy robes. These are also found in the spa. These feel like a throw, like a throw towel that you have on your couch, but it's not. It's actually a really plushy bathrobe. If you do decide to take them, they are 260 francs. What? 260 francs, Seb. You sure? Yeah, don't take them. 260. Also a little nice blanket, which is 220 francs. Here, this is a little blanket. Inside the closet, there are slippers. The safe is here. Laundry bag and laundry services list. How much do you think a shirt is? 20 francs. Extra bag in case you need it. There's a leather pillow for some reason. There's no price for that. No, I'm kidding. Kidding. I think they put that on the bed after for turn down service. Well, everything is programmable on the iPad. Oh, let's see, room controls. Fireplace, on. Fireplace is turning on, please wait a minute. Okay, it's turning on. Cool. All right, and that wraps up the room tour. Let's go check out the rest of the property. The Chetty has amazing pool and spa facilities. There's a 35 meter indoor Olympic style pool, as well as a heated 12 meter outdoor pool with great views. The spa is downstairs where you can find the gym, jacuzzis, and sauna areas. It does get pretty crowded in the evening, so I would recommend going during the morning or the daytime. If you're not a guest at the Chetty, they would normally charge about 200 francs per person for a day pass. If you ski, there's a ski valet that can store your gear. They don't have ski lockers, instead it's racks to store the equipment. They also have a rental desk if you need it. If you're headed to Gemstock, there is a complimentary hotel shuttle that you can call on demand. I initially thought the skis on the walls were rental samples, but they're actually exhibits of signed Olympic and competition skis. You cannot rent those. The team is super friendly and helpful if you need tips on where to ski based on your comfort level. During the winter on select days, there is a winter village that has a handful of cute dining options, which include the chalet for fondue, the dome for drinks, and the market booth. There's plenty of seating in the common areas of the hotel, which is nice. There are also some luxury boutique shops. If you live outside Switzerland, the tax refund rate is 5% and you do have to go to the tax refund booth at the airport for them to process it. There is not an automated kiosk, so be sure to allocate enough time if you are claiming a refund. Good morning, it's breakfast time. It's included in our rate. The buffet has four different sections. So it's the bread, fruits, and different cereals. There's actually a kid's station, which is where you can find this guy. <laughs> There's a basket full of them. There is a cheese room, and then also a cold cut and juice station and a hot station. There's also an a la carte menu that's included. So the complimentary items do not have prices next to them. So got a matcha latte, an omelet, and Seb got some fried eggs. Overall, pretty solid buffet spread. Okay, I'm going to wrap up here and explore the rest of the property. Our favorite meal of the trip was at Gutch by Marcus Neff, the other Michelin star restaurant at the top of the slopes. Again, you do need a lift ticket to take the Gutch Express here. It's located right next to the Japanese. The staff is super friendly and approachable. If you're curious about any of the wines or tools they use, just ask. Other tables were having a great time with the sabering sword and wine decanters. We ordered the seafood pasta as a starter and it had a generous amount of seafood on it. The octopus was some of the best we've ever had. For the main course, Sebastian ordered the lamb racks and I had the braised pork cheeks. Both were cooked perfectly and delicious. The meal was so good that we were tempted to go back for lunch the next day. Welcome to Gemstock. This is the expert hill, which I am definitely not skiing. One nice thing is that if you're taking a break from skiing, maybe it's a leisurely day, you still can take the cable car up here. So the Gemstock cable car is a bit unique where there's only two, so one goes up and one goes down. So they basically stuff the cart with as many people as possible for efficiency. And there's not really a restaurant on the top of Gemstock. However, there is an amazing observation deck where you can see all the mountains. Once you get off the cart, you go one of two areas. One, put on your skis and start going down the hill. And behind door number two is going to be the stairs to the observation deck. Sebastian is going to go on a few red and black runs and I will be at the hotel relaxing. 
<laughs> the Andermatt side is good for beginners and intermediate, and the jump stock side is definitely for intermediate and advanced, so no beginner hills here. It's also a lot more chilly, but not that bad because I'm still okay with just a sweater and a down jacket, and it's mid-March. However, if you come in January or February, it might be a different story. This is the north facing mountain, so the sun isn't facing here and melting the snow compared to the Andermatt side. While Sebastian was off skiing, I took the opportunity to explore Andermatt. If you're a James Bond fan, it's where Goldfinger was filmed on the Furka Pass Road in 1964. The gas station is now a hotel, and you can get a good view of the Furka Pass from the Gemstock Gondola. The village is really cute, and you can see where some of the North American ski villages get their inspiration from. There's a variety of ski shops for rentals, demo skis, and lessons. Also tons of options for Epra ski and meals. A pizza can be around 20 francs, same with pasta. Relatively reasonable prices. If you're looking to cook or grab snacks, there's a co-op grocery store. There is also a bus that goes around town, so be sure to check the bus routes in order to see if it can help you get where you want to go. It's dinner time and we got fondue. So this is the mushroom version, so cheese with sautéed mushrooms. And to accompany it, there is bread and a basket of boiled potatoes. How is it? Very cheesy, as you would expect. Overall, we really enjoyed our stay here. Although it is on the pricier side, I think it's worth the splurge if you are here in the wintertime and you want a spa day. The spa and pool are amazing. Prices are definitely more reasonable during the spring and summertime. So if I were to come back during the time, this would be my top pick hotel in the area. During the low season or the warmer seasons, you can find this hotel for around three to $400 per night. If you do book through American Express Find Hotels and Resorts or through a travel agent like Virtuoso, then you do get additional benefits on top of that. So that's definitely the way to go. When you book through Virtuoso, you do get early check-in upon availability. In our case, it was not available. And although it says 12 p.m. is considered early, we got our room around 2 p.m. And also late checkout when available and in our case, it was not as late as booking through Amex FHR. So if you book for American Express, it is guaranteed 4 p.m. checkout. But in our case, they initially wanted us to leave the room at 12. And I was like, hey, we have the virtuoso benefit. It'd be great if you could give us later checkout. And they were like, okay, 2 p.m. On top of that, both booking portals do give you a $100 dining credit. And we used ours at the restaurant. We considered using it at the Japanese, which is two Michelin star restaurant on the property. But after having the one Michelin Michelin star version on Gulch. We weren't that impressed. I didn't feel like splurging on the two Michelin star version. The restaurant was just okay. I think it is a little overpriced for what it is, but you are in a ski resort. If I were to do it again, for dinner, we ordered the Chetty beef, which is their signature item, and also the veal. The beef was good in flavors and it was like steak cubes. So it is better than like the regular stir fry tenderloin cut, but I think the price was a bit steep for what it was. The veal was also pretty good, so I think I would pick the veal over the cheddar beef. If I were to do it again for a dining credit though, I'd probably spend it in the lobby for afternoon tea or get a few drinks. Breakfast is another benefit that's included when you book for a portal, and it was pretty good. I would say it's a 7 out of 10. The quality was great, service was amazing, and there are a wide variety of juices and a la carte items to choose from. It would be a 9 or a 10 if they had more premium selections like maybe crab or lobster, like some other higher end resorts. The room itself is very spacious and high tech, so I did like that. It did get a little warm at night, so even though we set it to 19 degrees Celsius, it was still a bit warm for me, but I guess it's different by person. And 19 degrees Celsius is the furthest it does go down. We heard some other guests at breakfast also saying that they had to leave the balcony doors open because it was way too warm in the room. Service was amazing here, the staff is super attentive, 
supportive and friendly, so they'll help you out whenever. Um, there is also a ski valet, so it's not official lockers. It's basically racks to put your boots and skis in and they can dry off there. And if you're into luxury shopping, then luckily for you, there are two luxury shops here. One is a small boutique that has clothes from Valentino and Celine, and the other one focuses on watches and jewelry. There is also a complimentary shuttle if you are planning to go to the Gemstock side to ski. So one thing that's nice about the ski valet is they'll give you a QR code in order to call the shuttle whenever you want. So it might be a five 10 minute wait. The hotel is also right across the street from the main Andermatt Mountain. So that one's more for beginner and intermediate. And it's also where the train station is. So super convenient location. All right. And that wraps up the video. If you made it this far, leave a mountain emoji in the comments below and I'll try to heart and respond to it. My question to you is, what are your thoughts on this hotel? And would you ever wander into the Swiss Alps? Let me and everyone else know down in the comments below. See you in the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.